I would like to now compare raster and vector data models, describe conversions among these two models. So why use raster versus vector? And that choice is largely driven by the likely most common uses of the data. If the data have a structure that is inherently representing something, it's a linear network feature, you want to use a vector data set. If it's a continuous surface, you want to use a raster data set. And then there are data sets that are somewhere in between land cover you can display or can um, store or control as either raster or vector. So raster data basically have simpler structures. They don't have to have simple structures. There are uh, lots of nuances and changes in structures to make raster more complicated for various reasons for quicker access. For indexing for lots of things, but basically it's uh, just a simple list of cells, and so it's easy to access, easy to code. Vector data are usually complex, so the vector data descriptions are here on the right and the raster data on the left. So for the raster data, you often have larger data sets because you're recording where there's nothingness, and so you have to cover the entire area, and especially if you have a small cell size, raster data then can be quite large here for most data sets. Vectors are smaller storage for many types of data. Now, this isn't entirely true. Some data, it's, it's more difficult to store in vector. They take larger areas. For example, some land cover data sets, if there are large homogeneous areas, may be larger in raster I'm sorry, in vector than in raster, especially if they're large homogeneous areas, but they have a really convoluted edge. So you have to be careful in picking or making generalizations because there's always exceptions, but in general, for larger data sets, rasters are smaller. Sometimes raster have lower processing, slower processing because of the large data volumes, especially if you're processing in areas you're not very much interested in. You still have to bring all those data along. Um, the vector data can be rapid, but again, this really depends on what you're doing. One big difference is the precision, precision or accuracy for a raster data set is cell pretty much by the cell size. You can't make it more accurate than maybe a little bit smaller in 90 or 80 percent of the cell size. So if you have a data collection method that's very accurate, it doesn't make sense to store that data in a raster that's at a much larger grain size, if you're accurate to the nearest meter with a, a data measurement, unless that's the cheapest data measurement method, it makes no sense to put it in a, a 10 square meter raster. And sometimes if you get new data, the old raster dimension is just too large as data collection uh, methods improve. We can now relatively easily get centimeter level, you know, inch level road locations or building locations where 10 years ago that was pretty expensive. And so a raster data set that a two or three or five meter resolution is going to degrade that data, whereas the precision is limited primarily by the data collection method. So you can preserve that in most vectors. Now that's not to say that you don't sometimes um, course in the vector depends on the size of the data and what your use is, but it's easier to maintain data accuracy inside a vector and sample up. Radicers are fairly easy to code and modify because they have such simple structures, so it's just a set of squares. You don't really have to do much encoding to access a raster unless it's been optimized and had some of these things done we'll talk about, like run length coding to compress or expand or speed up the raster data set, whereas vectors often have a complex structure to sort of get into the geography itself. It's often a little bit more complicated. And finally, rasters are kind of natural for image display and continuous services, whereas vectors are preferred for network um, or linear themes. So depends on what's natural for the data set. Sometimes you pick one because that's the most common use, but you're always converting to the other. And that's the good thing is that we can convert. So if we have a vector here, we can overlay that on a raster of any size and convert it then to a raster data set. Now, 
we may have to do something or some other things when we're going from vector to raster. Um, but for the most part, we have to we easily we can assign cells. Now you have to realize that there are different methods and options you can select when converting, and you may get different results. So here we have uh, any part of the cell that touches a part of a vector line is going to be um, considered part of that that um, vector line, and so. Here, it's the near any cell rule. It has to be near the center. So any cell and near the center, you get a different output. And some might say a disconnected output if it's not close enough to the cell center for this line that runs along an edge. So the implementation of the algorithm impacts the output, and often parameters you can set impact the output. So you have to pay attention and know how your conversion performs and whether it gives you an accurate rendition of the vector coming out of the raster or the raster coming out of the vector. We can also take a raster and convert it to a vector, so the center of the point we can consider occupied for every one of these, and hence that is a set of, is a set of vertices which we will then connect, and then we can smooth that line to give it a better appearance, although we're not necessarily improving the accuracy of the data. We're taking a sort of a zigzag stair step and making it look more like, in this case, a river or road might look like. So we can convert back and forth. We want to choose wisely when we first develop a data set, both the grain size and whether it's raster, vector, and the extent. But we can convert if we need those data in some subsequent analysis in another data model.